Welcome back to our channel. Today we are addressing a pressing question for potential Linux users as the end of life for Windows 10 approaches. Do Linux users really have to use the command line? The answer is quite simple, so stay tuned to hear our verdict. A common concern among new Linux users is that this free and open source operating system is not easy to use and many feel intimidated by the command line. But does this fear have any basis in reality? To answer this question, we have prepared a fresh Linux installation on actual hardware, not in a virtual machine. So let's dive into the system and see where it leads us. The first thing people use computers for is to get their jobs done through applications. This raises the question, do you need the terminal to install programs in Linux? In our freshly installed Ubuntu build, like many mainstream user-friendly Linux distributions, there's no need to use the command line to install apps. You simply open the Ubuntu App Center, search for the app you need among thousands of available programs and install it with a single click. That's all there is to it. In fact, Linux has had a centralized app store for installing software for quite some time. You may want to tweak your system to suit your preferences or simply play with the settings. No problem, Linux has you covered. In all the most popular Linux distributions, you'll find a dedicated settings app. While experienced users may prefer the command line, novice users have a graphical user interface for various tasks, such as adjusting network settings, display options, and hardware configurations. For example, the settings app automatically detected and added our printer without any need for the terminal. File management was another area where Linux users often had to rely on the command line. However, it's no longer necessary as you can complete file management tasks through the system's graphical interface. Today, Linux has capable point-and-click file managers that allow you to do everything you need with your files just like you would in other operating systems. This includes tasks like copying, cutting, pasting and renaming files. Of course, it goes without saying that users can complete all of these tasks via a graphical user interface. If you need to write something in Linux, the operating system has you covered there as well. For basic text editing, you'll find suitable text editors in all major Linux distributions. If you require advanced text editing, Linux offers alternatives to Microsoft Word, such as the LibreOffice Suite, which includes Writer, a powerful program that will likely meet all your needs. You may not like the out-of-the-box appearance of your chosen Linux distribution. No worries, Linux is well known for its extensive customization options. Even in systems like Ubuntu, which features the GNOME desktop environment, designed to be used as is, you can change the default style within the settings app. You can choose a different accent color, or change the desktop background to suit your taste. It's important to keep your Linux system up to date to avoid security issues. While Linux is known for being more secure than other operating systems, maintaining that security requires regular updates. To update your Linux build, you don't have to use the command line. To get the latest security patches and system updates, we use Ubuntu's dedicated software updater app. Similar to Windows, you can keep your apps up to date by opening the App Center and checking the Manage tab to ensure your installed apps are regularly updated. However, 
what we have discussed so far doesn't mean you'll never need to use the command line. For advanced tasks, such as system administration, network configuration, or troubleshooting, you will have to use the terminal. While there are graphical tools for some of these issues, if you try to resolve a problem on your own, you will likely find a solution online that requires you to delve into the command line. For example, if you dual boot Windows and Linux, you might encounter an issue where the time in the system tray changes every time you log into Windows after using Linux. To fix this, you'll need to return to Linux and open the terminal. You just need to enter a simple command to prevent your Linux system from altering the time in your Windows installation. By the way, this isn't unexpected. Even in Windows, users often need to use the command prompt for advanced tasks. So, if you are considering switching to Linux when Windows 10 reaches its end of life in October, it's important to know that you don't need to use the command line for basic computing tasks. However, if an issue arises, whether with your system or your hardware, you'll most likely need to roll up your sleeves and wade into the waters of the Linux terminal. Therefore, learning the command line could prove to be a wise decision in the long run. For potential Linux users, we have a question. Are you considering switching to Linux? And are you already feeling apprehensive about the command line? For advanced Linux users, we'd like to hear from you as well. What was your experience when switching to Linux? Did you learn the command line in advance? Or did you grapple with it as you went along? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Share it and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.